Hey, are you struggling with properly exposing your S-Log footage in different lighting conditions? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to nail that exposure every single time. All right. So if you own a Sony camera and you don't exactly know how to expose for S-Log3, this is the video for you guys. There's basically three different ways to expose for S-Log footage. There's the wrong way, the easy way, and the correct way, which is kind of split into two different situations. If you're exposing for a subject or if you're exposing for a product or a landscape. All right, so let's look at how you should not expose for S-Log3. Now, you might have already seen a few videos on YouTube saying how you should always expose two stops over, expose to the right. And you don't exactly understand what that means. So generally speaking, if you take a look at your histogram, which is this tool right here, this is a graph that allows you to see the darkest points of the image and the brightest parts of the image. And with this tool, if the more you push to the right, the more you are exposing to the right. And so by using this tool and exposing more towards the right, you're gonna give the camera a lot more information for a better result overall. But where most people tend to get confused is the I always expose plus two stops over. And where that information isn't necessarily wrong, it can lead to a lot of confusion. A lot of people will leave their settings on multi-metering and then just kind of hit that plus two and think that they've done a good job and that the shot is properly exposed. But then when they go on their computer and they put in the footage, a lot of the image is overexposed and usually your skin tone tends to be underexposed because the multi-metering tool is just a general idea of the shot. So in the example where you're shooting and you have a bright sky and your subject is facing away from the sunlight, you're gonna end up with an underexposed subject or an overexposed sky. If your multi-tool is telling you plus two, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best exposure for that specific scene. And so a lot of people end up being misled by using this tool. And later in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to properly set your metering tools in order to nail that exposure. Okay, so now let's take a look at the easy way to expose S-Log3. So the easy way to expose for S-Log3 is setting your zebras to about 93 to 94. Now just test it out with your specific camera model, but basically 93, 94 will be the clipping point in your highlights and so you want to bring your exposure up until you start seeing those zebras and then just bring it down a little bit until they kind of disappear. Because anything that will have zebras in your image, you know it's going to be clipped. So this is a good way to kind of expose when you're not exactly sure what your subject or what you are exposing for. Let's say you're filming more of a landscape or more of kind of a wide area and you don't have control over the lighting. This is a great way to make sure that you're not peaking in your image. But again, make sure that you're not underexposing and that you're not clipping in the blacks. And this is usually because of the limited dynamic range in a lot of DSLRs and kind of pro user cameras where you don't necessarily have 15 plus stop dynamic range. And even in cinema cameras like the Alexa and the RED have their own limitations. So you can only push it so far. So there are some times when you're gonna go outside and it's way too bright outside and you kind of can't find that middle ground. So either you introduce more light or you diffuse the light that's kind of coming in, but at least you know that if you have your zebra set to 93, 94, you know what's going to be clipping in the image. So um, if you're enjoying this video so far and maybe you've learned a few things, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, there is a little subscribe option to this area somewhere down here. <laughs> you know, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment letting me know that you've subscribed to the video. There's no rush, just waiting. Did you do it yet? All right, so let's take a look at the last way to properly expose your S-Log3 footage. Now there's basically two different ways for you to do this while you're exposing for a subject or you're exposing for more of a landscape and a product. When you're exposing for a subject, you wanna set your zebras to standard plus range 
and set it to about 52% plus minus two. And as you can see on the screen, you want to expose them to the bright side of your face. So basically where the key light or the main light is coming from, you want to have your zebras start appearing on that side of the face. However, what you want to make sure is that you're not clipping anywhere else in the image. And so I understand that in most situations, if you're out filming, you know, videography stuff, or you don't have control of the lighting, this can be a little bit difficult, but ideally you're able to have control on lighting. So if you're working on a fiction project or on a documentary, you want to find the proper spots to film and to place your camera in order to get the best exposure possible for the shot that you're going for. And so the second way to properly expose S-Log3 is by using a gray card. Now with a gray card, what you're going to want to do is you're going to set your zebra level to 41, 42%. Again, just verify the model of your camera and see which one is closer to your middle gray. And you want to bring the exposure up until the zebras start appearing on that middle gray. So again, at 41 or 42%. You still want to avoid clipping any of the shots. So make sure that you're using your histogram and you're going to want to use a very ND in order to get that proper exposure. And just a pro tip, try to find the native ISO of your camera because the native ISO is that perfect middle ground between your highlights and your low lights. And there are some situations where you're going to be outside and you're going to want to shoot at a higher ISO to really retain the highlights and other situations where you're going to be inside and you want to shoot at a lower ISO to really retain the darks in the image. So I'm going to have a video that's going to go into much more detail on ISO and the right ISO to use in different situations and how to get those really, really clean cinematic images. So stay tuned for that video. But for now, just use your native ISO because that will be the most general and the most optimal situation for a lot of cameras. All right, well, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found this interesting and learned a few things about exposing for S-Log3. And I really hope this gives you the confidence to go out and shoot more in S-Log3. And also, if you start shooting in S-Log3 and you don't exactly know how to color correct it, I have another really good video on a step-by-step -step way to color correct S-Log3 footage. So make sure you check that out. All right, thank you so much for watching this. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.